Therefore, says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's work. Father God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are our Lord, you are our strength, and you are our redeemer. I pray right now, dear God, that you send fresh anointing this way. That when I speak, people may hear, and the word of God may go into their heart, that they may catch faith. That in this season, we all understand that it is grace that's keeping us in this race. It's not because we're smart. It's not because we're smooth. It's simply because of your amazing grace. We thank you for the grace that's over our lives, that's been covering us, shielding us, protecting us from stuff that we can't even imagine. And we thank you. We honor you. And it's in Jesus' name. If you know God's grace been keeping you, say amen. amen. Family, as we close out this sermon series, I think it's only right that we do a little bit of backtrack. As we look back on this sermon series, we first week we realize that on Pentecost Sunday that we are moving into a season of more. Um, we've established that on our Christian journey that settling is not the way. Um, we understand that there are some blessings that God has given us, and they are good. There are some jobs that he's given us that pay fair. There are some people that's okay. But some of us have made a declaration that the God that we serve has more. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful for what I have. But I just believe that God has some more in store for me. Because the Bible does say that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. The Bible also says that give and it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The Bible does say that he says he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive it. Tell your neighbor, you better stay close. So he says, you don't have room enough to receive it, so which means that God will bless you with so much that you can't have it all by yourself. That's the purpose of the saucer. The purpose of the saucer is to catch the overflow. So I don't know who need to see, hear this, but if you've been faithful over your food, you better get ready for a season of overflow. So we figured out in the first week that we got to have more of him. Can't do nothing without him. Mark, I need more of Jesus. I need more of him. We figured out after getting more of him, we figured out I need to make sure the next week that we have more laborers. The Bible says that pray to the Lord of the harvest to send more laborers. And the purpose of laborers is to work in the field, to edify, horrify the devil and edify the kingdom of God says, I need more workers. And we figured out, need more workers. And even though I wasn't going to be here, you know, Pastor got OCD. And I didn't feel like he's going to come and break our sermon series up. I said, brother, I never tell a pastor what to preach. But this time, I need you to preach in something and more. I don't care what you preach. But it needs to be in line with what we got going. Don't you come over there and preach nothing different. Stay in the line of more. And he came over here. And I watched the sermon. And y'all know about more abundantly. <laughs> so if y'all ain't telling you nothing, he told you. More abundantly. So now we figured out more abundantly. And I say we figured out more abundantly. We got more laborers. We got more you. But I think it's only right that we understand that all of this needs to be packaged in and under more grace. Like this translation, James chapter 4, it's the message Bible. It says, so let God work his will in you. 
yell aloud and yell loud, yell loud no to the devil and watch him make yourself scared. It says, say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner lives. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious. Really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. Don't badmouth each other. Friends, it's God's word, his message, his royal rule that takes beating, takes a beating in all that kind of talk. You're supposed to be honoring the message, not writing graffiti all over it. God is in charge of deciding humans' destiny. Who do you think you are meddling in the destiny of others? That's the message version. So here we understand that in order to function in these things, he says that I'll give you more grace. So as we understand more grace, we got to first off understand what grace is. So grace is God's free unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor of God. Stephen was a man who understood God's grace because the Bible says in Acts chapter 6, it says, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, perform amazing miracles and signs amongst the people. So we all understand that in order for us to operate in grace, we must understand that God is the only one that gives it to us. Grace is, in simple term, favor that's supernatural that enables and empowers us for salvation. Grace is what allows us to understand justification and sanctification. Grace is something that we all need but don't deserve. Love is just one thing, but grace is love in action. Grace is everything for nothing to those who deserve. And grace is everything to Grace is everything for nothing to, to those who don't deserve anything. Grace is what every man needs. Grace is what everyone can't earn. Grace is simply to be received because God gives it freely. And he says, I don't just give you grace just for this season. I give you grace to handle anything that you're going through. And here we see that James, the brother of Jesus, was writing to the church to let them know, why are y'all acting crazy like grace ain't there? Y'all sitting over in this church. He talking to the church. I'm, I'm in the text. He says, y'all sitting over there arguing fussing and fighting over dumb stuff. I'm in the text, y'all. Stay with me. James chapter 4. He says, what causes the fights and quarrels among you? Why y'all so divided at the church? Why y'all not getting along? Why is every ch a church on every building but nobody can come together? Why? What, what's going on? Why is it like a gang? Why this person can't go to that church, but we all say we serve the same God? It simply lets us know. He says, listen, you, how you going to win if you ain't right with them? Come here, my girl, L Boogie. How you going to win if you ain't right with them? He says, so now, how do you say that? He says, because do they come from, he says, it comes from the desires within you. He said, the reason it's drama in the church is because you're bringing it. He said, because you, you focus on the wrong stuff. He says, you're so worried about what stuff on the outside. So sometimes we spend time, energy to gain stuff on the outside, and we neglect and ignore what we need on the inside. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't make money. I'm not saying we shouldn't work hard. But what good is working hard for a house that is not a home? What good is having all this power, but you ain't have no peace? Yeah, you got all this money, Jimmy, but is your mental good? 
Yeah, you big time and you popular, but are you living a life full of purpose? What good is a bunch of gold when you ain't even good with God? See, some people want more money, a higher status, more recognition, more control, and when they don't get it, they fight over it. When they don't get their way, they want to beef, they want to quarrel, they want beef. And this Bible says, instead of trying to find a shortcut to life, instead of cutting corners, he says, we should humbly submit ourselves to God. And he says, the things that we fighting for, lying for, cheating for, stealing for, shamming and scamming for, he say, all you got to do is ask. You ain't got to steal. You ain't got to take. Just ask. The Bible says, ask, and you shall receive. So he's saying the reason you're not getting what you want and the reason it's so crazy in the church and so crazy in your home and so crazy, he said, because you ain't ask. And he said, it's three things that happen. He says, the first thing, it's, ha it's like that because you never ask me. You ain't never asked God to help you get out the jam and you wonder why you're in a jam. You never ask for help. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody check on me. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody even holler at me. Bro, ain't nobody know you was in the house crying yourself to sleep, bro. You posted on the gram, I'm good in the hood. <laughs> say, what it, say what you mean, mean what you say. Ain't nobody ask. So he said, you got to ask. So you can't be mad if you never, nobody helped you. If you ain't never came to the help center. Smooth boy, wasn't it? I don't know, but I ain't checking on me. Did you come to the help? I already said it. The brother said every week. You want so now he says, not only asking, then he says, now you got something that's not asking because of closed mouth. So y'all do know that. So then it says, next part he said, he says they asking for the wrong stuff. You asking God for money when you should be asking for management skills. Because if you don't have, if you got money. With no management skills, you ain't going to do nothing but mess up more money. You want to be a, take the time, Pastor. You want to be a, we got company, y'all. You want to be a millionaire, but you ain't even doing good as a thousandaire. Let alone a hundred. Eh? Oh, oh, you got. So, so, it says you're asking for the wrong stuff. You I'm gone, fellas. It's, gone. it's too late, fellas. Eddie, put the brakes on him. You want a wife? Uh, somebody said, all right, over here. I heard it. I felt it. I felt it right here. Take your time. I felt, I felt the room get tight. You want a wife, but you're not being a husband. You, you're not looking for a wife, bruh. What's like, cook for you? Clean your clothes? Bruh, ain't a no wife. It's a mother. I'm a, I got it. I'm going to hang out here. I knew I was going to be by myself. You, that's, not, that's not what you do. No, you got to bring. He's a grown man, dog. I'm working over here, fellas. Ladies, don't trip. I'm coming to get y'all ladies. What a man. I want to put a ring on it. First off, why would I put a ring on Something that I already got full benefits to. We got children's church, y'all. I got all access. What is it? What's my motivation? You're asking for the wrong stuff. I told y'all children come back. It's going to get tight. But it's going to get right. Stay online. Stay with me. Let me move over. I look like I'm a little crooked. So you got to make sure you, you say you're asking for the wrong stuff. You want, I want my own house. I seen your apartment. No, you don't. I'm working, y'all. And, and, and then I'm ready to work. Then he say, well, I want my own car. I want a new car. Hold on. I want a new car. But you don't take care of the old car. So he say, you're not asking, and you're asking for the wrong stuff. 
Then he goes to him one more. He says, and then you asking for the wrong reason. So he's saying those are the three reasons that you will always see disorder and dysfunction anywhere. Because what happens is it'll be people that don't ask, ask for the wrong stuff, ask for the wrong reasons, and hate on the people that's working. And you see the glory, but don't know the story. You see me shining, but you wasn't there when I was struggling. What the hymn writer say? You wasn't with me shooting in the gym. So now what happens? They hate because they can't have what you got. But they want what you got, but don't want to do what you had to do to get it. Let alone what it takes to keep it. Because it's easy to get to the top. It's hard to stay there. Because sometimes you'll get an opportunity, but it's hard work and integrity that will keep you there. So he said, that's where a whole bunch of fight. And then he had a problem. He says, you bunch of adulterers. Cheaters, cheaters, pumpkin eaters. He said, y'all straight cheating on God. I'm in the book, y'all. James chapter 4. Don't, don't close your Bible. It says, you adulterous people. Don't you know that a friendship with the world is enmity against God? So he's saying, you doing all of this to be in with people that ain't for you? You, you passed that. When you was in the world, you was chasing the money, the cars, and the clothes. All that stuff is just a byproduct. Because when you're operating in purpose, all that stuff comes with purpose. Give me Bible. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says, then all of these other things will be added unto you. So as you're rocking in purpose, I'm going to bless you on purpose. So he says, you didn't got to worry about the world stuff. You shouldn't have to compete with the world. And they're talking about, it's a recession. No, it's not a recession coming. Not if you're a child of God. Now, if you're out here trying to keep up with the Joneses, Try and ball. Ball, you can ball. Just on your level. You might not be at the Neiman Marcus just yet. You might be still get your marshals on. Ain't nothing wrong with marshals. If you just take your time. Just don't go get one, one short leg, one long leg. Gotta check the stuff. But just take your time. Go to the one out in the county. Get your thing on. You may not be, you might be, you might not be in Nordstrom's yet. So I'm going to go downstairs to the rack. Take my time. Find me something over in the section. I'm going to ball on my level. And I'm going to do what I do on my level. Because you go out here spending money you don't have, for one. Buying things you don't need, for two. For people that ain't even looking at you. For three. You did all that, you got four likes. But that's a whole other sermon. But here we go now. Four likes and two of them was you. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, comment. That's you. You can't. Stay focused, Pastor. Cheating on God. It says, you adulterous people. It says, a friendship with the world is, is enmity against God. So it says, listen, you need to understand that you can't be in the world and abide by the word. He says, you got to separate yourself. He says, I ain't saying you can't have fun. But you got to know how to go move in and move out. And just because you're in it, don't, you have, don't mean you have to be of it. So he says, a friendship with the world is when you involve seeking pleasures at other people's expense. So anybody that got to make you look small to feel big, ha. Ah. You ain't got to put me down and, hold up, bro, what you, what? why you come hating on me? Yeah, you sitting over there with that little hole, bro. Watch people like that. Because some people got to make you feel small to feel big. That's it. That's it. Hold on, I got, I got, I know, I got, when I leave the pulpit, y'all know I left the sermon. It's those one ups. Come on, y'all folks say, what's a one up, Pastor? Every time you tell a story. <laughs> they just got to get. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I just got to, uh, New, uh, new Lexus. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to grab the range. The new and all black one. 
Bro, I got mine. You can. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm ready to get married. Yeah, I'm ready to get married. Show up. I'm ready. Man, I'm ready to go to Jamaica. Show up. Go across the country. But I'm ready. I'm getting married on the beach. White sand in the feet. <laughs> yeah, I just found me these new, boy, these new jink, these joys. Man, I got the joint. Man, I got this. I got two of them, Mark. <laughs> oh, man, you bluffing. You ain't got, oh, you ain't got the watch. You ain't got the Mark Jacob. Oh, bruh. You can't just say, yo, you look nice. Cause, cause, Cause people that do that, they have low self-esteem. Let me work. Let me tell you how you can tell when the person is connected to their esteem. Cause if you dress from Neiman Marcus or you dress from Marshalls, it doesn't matter how you dress, it's who dress. Cause you got a lot of brothers out here who got the bag on but look bad. Like, bro, you ain't even put that together right, Jack. Let me help you. What's that there? You, you're doing it all wrong. You just bought everything. Just let me get all that. Cause it's, no, just because it's. <laughs> PSA, just because it's name brand don't mean it's look right. Just because it's name brand don't mean it look right. You got to put it together. So, so let me get back to the Bible. Let me get back. Let me get back. So, so he says, friendship with the world. So now what happens? You don't have to go putting people down to come up. You don't. Because you should be lifting people up. Martin Luther King said the only time you look down is when you're lifting somebody up. Because at the end of the day, ain't nobody say, tell your neighbor, you're here by God's grace. <laughs> and you need some more. Some more grace. I'm going to get there. So, so now he says, point number one, what does grace do? All right. So we figured out how we need to function, we understand that we need to be humble. Understanding that it's by God's grace. Because he says he gives more grace to the humble. And he said that the reason all that quality is going on, because ain't nobody want to be humble. Nobody want to be chill. Nobody want to take the back seat. Everybody got to be shine. Everybody got to be up front. No, he says, listen, first thing is grace saves you from your sin. Number one, more grace. Grace saves me from my sin, from my note takers. Jimmy, you're going to be the designated note man next week. I got you. I'm going to hook y'all up next week. I'm going to get Jimmy to lay y'all. Say more. So I got you. So now it's grace saves us from our sin. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 from my note takers. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It's a gift of God. So think about a gift is if I give you a gift, you don't have to do what? Pay for it. All you have to do to a gift is receive it. So now we understand that you should never treat get, you never should treat grace like you paid for it. Because you got some people that get gifts and act funny with stuff that was given to them. How you ain't going? How you ready to charge me? You crazy? You got something for free? <laughs> You scamming. That's what you're doing at this point. How are you going to charge me for something you got for free? Or how are you not going to give me something that God gave you? You get it for free, but you taxing me on it. I'm going to take my time. So now God's grace saves us from sin. So we realize this, don't, this, ain't, for no, this, this ain't for my perfect people. I want to talk to all my people who've been through something, who got a, 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 a BC, my BC days, my before Christ days. Where we, where we at? Come on, I want to know who in the house. I got to check the house. Because if ain't none of y'all got no BC days, I'm going to be O-U-T. Because somebody is lying. What's the BC? That's before I met Jesus. I know y'all come today, y'all clean, y'all got y'all stuff on. But I'm talking about when you was turned up days. I know you're trying to act like, yeah, yeah, those days. Back, come on now. Mm-hmm. Come on. Volcanoes. I'm going to go back now. Don't you make me go silver shadows. I mean, come get somebody now. Don't make me cut up for my, for my younger crew. Shake and bake. Come on now. Let me... Let me Come and get, uh, let's go. So now what happens? You realize that we weren't always living the way we live. We weren't always living to, to serve God. And so what happens is most people hear the word sin and get creeped out. But my thing is when you hear the word sin, you should get excited because that's what he saved you from. Now, if you ain't never been saved from nothing, you ain't never been changed from nothing, you'll forget who brought you to where you are. Because I can tell y'all, I'm not here because I'm smart. I'm here because of God's grace. And God is patient. 
So now we realize that it is his grace that saved you from your sin. So when you understand that it's grace that saved you from your sin, there's no reason for you to stay where he brought you from. So he says grace is not to keep on sinning. Grace is just in case you sin. Grace is like car insurance. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Can I work this one? Grace is like car insurance. You, you, you don't want to use it. You don't, your goal is not to use it. You don't just say, you know what, man, I'm about to go out here and hit something. <laughs> man, I'm ready to go sideswipe something on North Avenue. No, you're not. You, the goal is to not hit anything. But as soon as something happens that's called an accident, intent and accident isn't the same. So that's what grace is for. Grace covers our sin. So he says, listen, grace is there to cover you, not for when you go intentionally do things. It's just in case you do things. Because some people, they abuse grace. So he says, listen, grace is to save you from your sin, not to keep you comfortable in it. It's a just in case. It's, it's just in case you mess up. It's just in case you side swipe. Because why? There will be some things that happen in life that you can't control and you're going to need God's grace. So you realize that God's grace is what saved me from my sin. And you realize that since his grace saved me, I got to serve him. I got to serve him. And now me serving him, I understand that the law has entered to offense my bound. It says, but where sin abound, grace abound much more. So you're saying that you can't out God's grace. Yes. You can't. But you got to make sure that you understand that grace is a gift. And the grace is given not for you to keep on abusing it. He says, but the grace is there for you to use. Just in case you need it. So now we understand that I know that. God's grace saved me from sin, but not only does it save me from sin, but God's grace is freely given. Number two, it's freely given, and it's to be used, not abused. He says, much more grace will abound. He's saying, so all of y'all beefing and arguing and not being on one accord, he says, I'll give you more grace to cover that. So he says, and more grace cover that, he says that the grace that God has given you, it's not for us to abuse just to do whatever we want. It's to help us to get in line. So the Bible says, it says, what shall we say then? So we, shall we continue in sin? So he's saying, you shouldn't stay in it. It says, so you're just going to stay in it so grace may abound. He's saying, no, don't get comfortable in it. Use it as a sign to help you get out of it. So it says, Hebrews chapter 4, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. So he says, you have grace so that when you find yourself in dark seasons and situations where you feel disconnected from God, he's given us a pathway to, to receive his grace. And he says, when you come to get this grace, he's saying, I know you messed up. I know you sin. I know you got some things inside of you. Because why? When you mess up and you deal with sin, guilt comes. So now you feel bad. You know what? I ain't even going to church this Sunday. God is mad at me. I, I, I cuss all of them out. I even got the boss. Ah, ah I'm fired. <laughs> I'm done. That's, I might as well take my stuff. So now what happens? You, you, you make these things. He says, listen, that's where you know that. He says, come boldly. So he's saying that when you mess up, don't come to God like, oh, Lord, you know I'm mess. He says, come boldly. To the throne of grace. So he's saying that I know you messed up, but I'm still giving you access. I, I know you don't deserve it, but I'm still letting you in. So when you come to me, he says, listen, it's to be used, not abused. So if you're using it in the right way, you have no reason to be frustrated, aggravated, and agitated. But you have to know how to activate it. Because a lot of times when we mess up, we don't want to go to God. We want to just go through it by ourselves. And not knowing that God says, when you mess up, that's the best time to come to me. Because he says, if you confess your sins, he says, I am faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you 
from all unrighteousness. So he said, listen, I need you to know that uh, First John 1, 16, he says, and from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. So he said, grace is like a, 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 a mat to help you. So when you're walking on a tightrope and you fall, you, 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 sh- you want to hit the bottom and you think you're going to hit the bottom. But he said grace is what catches you. So that's why when you'll find yourself in certain seasons and situations that you just want to get out of and it hurts and it's frustrating and it's irritating and it's aggravating and you're going to the throne of grace, pastor. I'm praying about it, pastor. I'm fasting about it, pastor. And the Bible says that God said, he said, could you remove this? Can you stop this? Can you get me out of this situation? Can you fix it? Can you heal? Can you deliver? Can you just move? Can you just do it? He says, no. What do you do when God tells you no? He said, no. He said, but I, I'm telling you no to the prayer. But what I am going to do is he says, but my grace is sufficient. So he says that I may not take you out of it, but what I will do is be with you while you're in it. Which takes me to my third point is because grace is a gift that helps us grow. (laughs) But it hurt, Mark. (laughs) I'm being stretched. He's pulling me in different directions. He's he's working on me. He says, so now, he says my grace is sufficient. Then he says, because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So you telling me I got to be weak to be strong? He says, the weaker you are, the stronger I become. And he says, I need you to understand that you need grace to grow. And the dangerous part is we give grace to others. That we don't even give to our selves. So as I get ready to take my exit to my, my sermon, I want somebody here today to give yourself some grace. Be patient with you. You working on something. Come on, Al. You working on something. It doesn't look like much to you, but I'm working on something. It may be products all over the place the kitchen may look crazy but I'm working on something and I need you to give me a a little bit of grace to know that I know it may not look like the normal activity but I'm working on something so I don't know about y'all but football right and football and basketball um, there's something called a halftime okay we're all be great roll y'all it's called halftime and halftime is when you extend your break so in halftime, in the middle of the game, all the players get a chance to go into the locker room and do what's called a reset. The thing about halftime I like is because no matter how you've been struggling, no matter how your team has been performing, the purpose of halftime is to go into the room to encourage you. And the purpose of halftime is to prepare you for the next half. And so now what most people don't realize is that yes, you've made some mistakes. Yes, you dropped the ball. Yes, you threw some interceptions. Yes, you missed some plays. Yes, you made some mistakes. And yes, the score says you are losing. But what you have to understand is this that the God we serve he not only allows us to get through the first half but he also gives us what's called a grace period and what the grace period does is it allows you to be able to look on the first half of your life to make some decisions to make your mind up and says I have made some mistakes in the first half of my life but as I move into this next season of my life I'm not going to allow the past to stop me but what I will do is at the halfway season is I'm going to learn from my mistakes and now I'm going to exercise the grace that God has given me and I know some some of y'all have played a bad first hand of your life. You made some mistakes. You did some lying and falling short. But the good news is this, that God has given us a half time. And everybody right now should thank God for the second half of your life. Because this second half of my life, I'm going to take this time. 
to make sure I get focused. I'm going to make sure I take this time to get consistent. And I know I made some mistakes, but I need somebody to know that I thank God for giving me some more grace. And why I got the grace for the second half, I need you to know that I got grace, Jimmy. Why? I'm blessed because I got the grace. And grace not only give me what I need right there, but grace reminds me of all the blessings that God has for me. I am prosperous. It's because of God's grace. I'm successful. It's because of God's grace. I'm victorious. It's because of God's grace. I am talented. It's because of God's grace. And I need you to look at your neighbor and help me close this sermon out. It says, I'm still here. And it's because of God's grace. And I don't want just grace right now. I need God to give me some more grace. I need more grace so I can be talented. I need more grace so I can be creative. I need God's grace to help me stay wise. I need God's grace to help me stay healthy. I need God's grace to help me stay in shape. I need God's grace to help me stay energetic. I need God's grace to help me be happy. I need God's grace to help me stay positive. I need God's grace to help me stay passionate. I need God's grace to help me stay strong. I need God's grace to help me be confident. I need God's grace to help me be secure. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. I need God's grace to remind me that I'm beautiful. I need God's grace to help me know that I'm valuable. I need God's grace to remind me that by his stripes I am healed. I need God's grace to know that I'm accepted. I need God's grace to know that I'm redeemed. I need God's grace to know that I'm forgiven. I need God's grace to know that I'm determined to discipline. I need God's grace. And anybody know what I'm talking about? The hymn writer said it like this. He said, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. If you're able to see right now, it's because of God's grace that I'm still here. Stand on your feet right now and throw your head back. It says it's the grace of God that helps me stay in the race. It's the grace of God that kept a roof over my head. It's the grace of God that kept me out of jail. It's the grace of God that kept me out the grave. Do anybody know about his grace? I thank God for his grace. I thank God grace on Monday, grace on Tuesday, grace on Wednesday, grace on Thursday, grace on Friday, grace on Saturday, and grace on Sunday. And for everybody that's trying to figure out why grace keep holding me down, it's because the Bible says that yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death I'll fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me but let me fast forward and get to my part it says surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life so when I'm going through a storm I got grace when I'm going through a pain I got grace when I'm walking through the fire I got grace so I dare somebody right now Throw your head back and says, I thank God for grace. And, and then he goes down and he says, God, I'm done. All standing. He says, He gives more grace to the humble. To the humble. To the to the humble. To the humble. To the humble. So he says, you got to know how to humble yourself. And then, and then it goes down and he says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. And, and this is my part. It says, draw near to God. He says, draw near to God. But then he says, as you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. So what does that mean? It means that if you take one step towards God, he'll take two steps towards you. In this season, God is looking for serious people. 
serious. I mean, listen, he's, he's looking for serious people. And, and, and when you're serious about God, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Why? Because nobody got to teach you to do the wrong thing. <laughs> it's doing this right thing. I got to put that work in. So he says, draw near to God. So as the altar is open for anybody who desires special prayer, who realizes that I need to just be functioning under God's grace. He says, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Then it says, cleanse your hands. He's saying, listen, clean up. He said, clean yourself up. that you are blessed and empowered by this sermon. I want to ask you today, if you're watching this sermon and you decided that you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, don't wait. Do it today. How do you do that? Number one, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died and he rose, you shall be saved. So first off, start off with confession by simply repeating after me, Father, I have sinned. I need you to come into my heart and change my life. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead for me. I believe that you have sent the Holy Spirit to live inside of me, to change me and transform me. So today, come into my heart, Jesus, and have your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray this prayer for the first time, do me a favor. Make sure that you take this and you make sure that you connect with the Bible Believing Church and connect and get baptized and partner with someone to serve to the kingdom and the glory of God. Next plea is this. If you are watching this and you are what the Bible would call a backslider, which means that you already were saved and you were connected to Jesus, but you slipped away and you want to come back. Today is your day to come back into a right relationship with Jesus. And how do you do that? You do that by simply, come on. The Bible says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you. So today, confess and receive God's forgiveness. My last plea is this. If you're watching this and you decided that, man, this thing has blessed my life, I want to be a part of this ministry. I want to partner with AHOP and I want to connect. All you have to do is go to www.ahopministries.org and partner with us. So whether you want to join, whether you want to partner, whether you want to just continue to fellowship, please partner. And if you're looking to get some information, please go to the website, www.ahopministries.org. So at this time, I'm going to let you go. But before I let you go, I want to pray for you. Because I don't know what you may be going through. I don't know what ups you've been through. I don't know what lows you've been through. So let's pray. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, I pray right now. For whoever's watching this video, I pray that you give them the strength, the courage, the guidance, and all that they need to get through whatever they're going through. I pray right now that you empty them of their self and fill them with you. I pray that you give them joy unspeakable, and I pray that you give them peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray right now that you endow them right now with your presence and your power and give them your provision. I thank you for your presence in their life. I pray that you strengthen them up in every area of their life. And it's in Jesus' name I pray this prayer, and I say amen. Amen. Hey, listen, thank you for watching today. Without further ado, come on, stand on your feet, get on up out your seat, and get ready for today's benediction. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask, imagine the dream to the only wise God, be power, dominion, and majesty both now and forever. May our enemies come one way, but scatter seven different ways, but never come near our dwelling. Lord, may you bless us in the city and bless us in the field. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. See you next week, 10.30.